Greetings today from Botswana. Before we get started today, I just ask that you have a little patience with me if you see the curtain moving behind me. It's a very hot day today, and I have decided to leave the windows open uh, so I can get a little bit of air. I hope you'll have compassion. I have limited spaces that I can do these videos in uh, that they turn out well. Uh, today, I'd like to talk to you about holidays as we are in the holiday season. I thought I'd share a little bit about what the Word of God actually tells us with regard to holidays. It might surprise you. One thing that is very clear, and we don't know it, is that the New Testament of the Bible actually promotes no holidays for believers, for Christians. And this is so then all Christians, we are not to follow holidays. It is a religious work that God does not honor unless he has uh, ordained it. And you see, we have grown up all of our lives. Like if you're, if you're like myself, uh, like my wife, we have grown up with Christmas, with Easter, with all of these various holidays, and we don't think much about it. It's just, we have holidays, but mankind is addicted to holidays. We just love them, and it's like we can't get by without them. Everything's got to be very interesting and, and exciting all the time. However, when it comes to the spiritual, we Christians are supposed to follow the Lord in what he shows us to do or not to do. Now, I just want you to know in this video, I'm not telling you what to do or not to do. Now, my wife and I no longer celebrate holidays. However, this is, has got to be uh, your commitment to the Lord and what he shows you to do. Each, per each person's situation may be a little different, and uh, there may be adjustments that need to be made. And so I'd like to read this to you from Galatians chapter 4, verses 8 through 11. This is a quintessential uh, scripture passage that tells us about, about holidays. Now, the Galatians were a group of Christians that had started out in faith, but they were beginning to fall back into works. They were beginning to imitate like a lot of the Jewish festivals, a lot of the things that were going on. And so this was kind of a warning. The whole book of Galatians was kind of a warning to them not to do this, not to be falling back into works. You're saved by the grace of God. If you start living after the law, then you will have to follow the law perfectly, and no one can. And so that's the backdrop for the book of Galatians. And again, this is Galatians 4. I'm going to read verses 8 through 11. How be it then, when ye knew not God, ye did service unto them which by nature are no gods. But now, after that ye have known God, or rather are known of God, how turn ye again to the weak and beggarly elements, whereunto ye desire again to be in bondage. Ye observe days and months and times and years. I am afraid of you, lest I have bestowed upon you labor in vain. So you see what Paul is saying. This is kind of a serious issue. He's seeing them doing this, and he's saying this, this really shouldn't be. You know, they got saved. They came to the Lord. Why are they doing this when the Bible uh, never tells them to? Uh as you might remember from Acts chapter 15, I've mentioned this before. It's uh, the first 31 verses especially. I will have all this information down, by the way. I'll have it all down in the description at the bottom of the page. But you'll remember that there were some Pharisees that had come to the Lord, and they were making, making waves. They were saying that the Gentiles needed to follow the law of Moses in order to be saved. Sure, they came to Christ, but now they have to follow the law of Moses. And so this was brought up as a dispute amongst the apostles and uh, the early disciples. And so they met together and they came to the decision. And that is, no, no. It's very simple. What uh, The requirements are very simple. It's like you'll abstain from idols, from fornication, and from things strangled, and from blood. That's about it. There really are not requirements. The only two sacraments that Jesus instituted during the days of his flesh were baptism and communion. That is the believer's baptism. After they have been saved, they are baptized. It's not child baptism. That doesn't do anything for you. And then, of course, communion, which is done in remembrance of his death on the cross for our sins. So it's really pretty simple in that way. But to this day, we celebrate holidays. So let's look at this a little bit. Again, I ask that you would be patient with me. I've already shared the scripture. Now let's think about these holidays for a minute. 
When we talk about holidays, of course, the root words for this are, are holy day. A holiday is holy day. And when the scripture is talking about this, it's talking about uh, days and, and rituals, things we do to honor God, to impress him, to please him, whatever. It's not talking about things like independence days. Almost every nation has an independence day. That's kind of a separate thing. I mean, you're well able to say, oh, wow, you know, I'm, I'm glad that we're an independent nation. Go ahead, celebrate it. Celebrate it correctly. What about birthdays? Birthdays should be fine to celebrate within families. There's nothing wrong with this. One of the things that can be a little confusing, I think, is New Year's Day. Now, New Year's Day is obviously an annual day that doesn't have to do with, with the religious, per se. However, there are many churches that really go all out for what they're going to do on New Year's. Some are having parties. I don't necessarily approve of that. I read uh, the testimony of uh, George Mueller from the 19th century. And he was a pastor at a church, and what they did, typically, they were in a prayer meeting from about 7 in the evening till maybe 1 in the morning over New Year's Eve and New Year's. They were thanking God for preserving them during the year and also then committing the New Year to him. I don't think there's anything about New Year's Day that is, in particular, that a Christian has to observe. And for the most part, we really should be staying away from holidays. Now, we want to look at what is bad about the holidays. Why would the Lord not tell us or tell us not to, to celebrate them, essentially? Okay, the holidays that we're talking about here have pagan roots. I'm talking about Christmas, Valentine's Day, Easter, Halloween, which the Catholic Church kind of adopted as All, All Hallows' Eve, saying that November 1st was All Saints' Day. And that's really where these came in. They all came in through the Catholic Church. They kind of joined uh, things from Christian tradition to the pagan holidays that were already in place. And in this way, they got a lot more converts. People were a lot more uh, agreeable with them, such as, you know, Christmas. Now, I've done a video on Christmas. There's going to be a, a link in the description regarding Christmas. All of these pagan days, they, are, they have lies. There are many lies that go along with them. And I just want you to see this and look at it for yourself. When I found out the lies that were associated with Christmas, I mean, I was, I was furious, to tell you the truth. I felt like I had been deceived my whole life. And people that knew the truth weren't telling me. And so I was being a hypocrite in what I did supposedly honoring the birthday of Jesus when it was never any such thing. So if you'd like to take a look at that, go ahead and take a look at that. I have a link to that, as I said, in the description. I also have a link to a Thanksgiving blog. Now, that's a blog. It's not a video. The thing with Thanksgiving Day is it's a little bit more pure than these other days I have listed because it's not, in, it's not founded in pagan tradition. This was actually founded, I believe it was Abraham Lincoln instituted this in 1863. I think that was the first year that it was observed and that was passed by Congress and it was an official day and everything. It actually sort of commemorated uh, when the pilgrims had come over to America in like 1620. And so this sounds like a really good day. But in truth, there is still an evil in the holidays because it takes away from the everyday relationship that God wants with his people. When we do these holidays, it begins to give us a different focus. So you can look at that, that blog if you're interested in it, because there's plenty of scriptures that tell us Thanksgiving to the Lord should be every day, and it should be every day. And so I'm going to go on here uh, into some of these characteristics. Again, first I'm going into the religious bad of the day. Number one is it's a religious work that make people feel good about themselves. I'm doing a good thing. I'm celebrating Jesus' birthday. Okay, I'm celebrating his resurrection. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. It's a work. You know, you probably realize, probably most of you realize, at least, you know, from, from my background, plenty of people that come to church Easter and Christmas, they're not there any other time of year. They think they are doing something that's going to look good for them, but they never give their hearts to the Lord. I mean, it, it just it's just worthless because we are saved by grace through faith. We are not saved of works. 
So it gives you a deception there that you're doing a religious work that is acceptable with God. Again, I'm saying that God wants consistency and not special days. Of course, that again, that's one of those things I just mentioned with Thanksgiving. Being thankful is something all the time, you know, but when we make big productions and do big things, it's a little bit deceiving. Another thing that's really bad about the holidays is we have bad associations. And for this, I dare say, of course, Halloween would be a good one. But especially with Christmas, there is a lot of drunkenness at Christmas time. Christians ought to really ask themselves, why does the unsaved world have no problem with Christmas? And so that should be something we stay away from because we shouldn't have anything in common with the unbelief. But of course, in 2 Corinthians 6, 14 to 17, it tells us that we should not be unequally yoked together with unbelief. Even if you're not getting drunk, very typically, you could be, uh, you could be attending parties where people are getting drunk. And one way or another, you're supporting a greater system. Uh, Psalm 1, verses 1 and 2 said, says, Blessed is he that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. No, we don't do that. We have to watch our company. Ephesians 5.11 says, Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. So would you go to a Christmas party and start rebuking those that are drinking the alcohol? You see, it gets to be a little bit difficult but there are bad associations with the holidays. One thing that I saw here, this is just kind of interesting, and this would apply mostly to Christmas. Christmas is a big one in, in, uh, in this category. Just listen to Proverbs 3.27. It says, Withhold not good from them to whom it is due, when it is in the power of thine hand to do it. Do you hear that? When it, is the power, when it is in the power of your hand to do it. Have you ever noticed how you might do something for somebody during the year? And then they give you a little something at Christmas time. Oh, thank you for mowing my grass back there in August. You know, I, I wasn't feeling well. You know, I was, oh, thank you. Okay. You're not supposed to wait till Christmas time. You're supposed to thank them then. If it's in the power of your hand to do it, you know, whatever it is you intend to do. Maybe it's just a little card. It doesn't have to be anything special. You know, that's between you and the person, what it means to you inside. But uh, so often it comes like that. We're thanking somebody at Christmas for what happened much earlier in the year, and we don't have to. And I dare say there's probably a lot of those times that just get swept under the rug because we forget it. I mean, we're only human. We forget it. So that's another comparison of these things. There's also physical bad, though, that comes with the observance of holidays. And I know you know this, but you don't think about it because we've had the holidays with us for so long. If you're traveling across the country to meet someone, to, to spend time with family, have you had travel delays? Hmm? And if you're in the United States, do you have snow delays? Yes, 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 you do. Okay. Travel delays would tell you the reason you have travel delays is because everyone's trying to catch the same airplane. And if they were spread out during the year in a more normal fashion, it just wouldn't happen that way. That's kind of a little one. Loneliness is very big, especially at Christmas, but it can be any time because holidays focus so much on family. And I'm not saying family is a bad thing, but when you're alone, that can really bite deeply. And we really don't hear about the suicides that are going on during the holidays, but there are many. There are many. I was near suicide uh, in a holiday period in my life. And I just say that without the holidays, first of all, there is, there is not that great loneliness. You say, oh, well, you'd be lonely anyway, but it's really made worse when there is a holiday. I mean, you're watching television, you're watching the commercials, families are gathering, and you don't have one. You see, that makes everything so much worse. And so loneliness is a bad part of the holidays. There's definitely appreciation for those that have reached out to, to others on the holidays. Some organizations do that. I mean, I applaud them. But the holidays themselves are a source of great evil in this area. You know, the physical changes for the holidays, they just change your pattern of doing things. 
right now we are suffering a water outage. Okay, this is, I'm doing this, it is Monday, and our water has been out since Saturday. It's been out maybe two days, four hours. We have no water in our area. And you know what? The holidays interfere with the repair. The holidays and the weekends interfere with the repair. It is terrible, and we have to wait for it. One year, I don't remember the year. It was a little while ago, though, I saw the headline. It was in China. They were having a New Year's celebration in a stadium. 31 people died as part of the stadium collapsed. Guess what? Without the New Year's celebration, it wouldn't have happened. I also see this. This, this was another death that happened. Uh, a job that I had taken earlier in that year, uh, one of their employees had died on New Year's Day. He was with his wife and small child in the car. He was in the back with the child in the child seat, and she was driving. Now, they were out celebrating the New Year's holiday with friends or family. She was unfamiliar with the roads, and she ran a stop sign, and she got hit by a truck that was coming down the road. He, she made it, but he was killed. She and the child made it. And this is something that, again, was a difference because of the holiday. She was driving in a place that she was not familiar with. I look also here, there was a time when uh, we needed a heater in our home. Our, we were using electric heaters, and one of our heaters had gone out. And it was kind of important for our warming at that time. I mean, later on, we got a better system, and it was okay. And I said, okay, we're going to go to this place, this hardware store. They have a good selection. I know that they're reliable. Let's see what they have. They were closed. It was January Second, not the first. The first is a holiday. The second isn't. But what happened is the first was a Sunday. And they're always closed on Sunday. So what did they do? They closed on Monday also. Isn't that lame? I mean, you're supposed to be helping your customers, right? But instead, we're helping ourselves to extra days off. Oh, we're there for you. Come out for all the things you need. No. <laughs> I was very upset with that. Thankfully, there was another hardware store nearby that realized it was valuable to stay open the day after New Year's. And they helped me and they ended up getting much more business from me in the future. I mean, I know this is common in America, uh, somewhat because they're paying people the holiday and stuff and they're try kind of cutting their expenses and giving them that extra day off. But you think if it's on Sunday, you know, so what? You always have Sunday off. That's good. Okay, that's good. You know, why take another day or why not bring some people in who aren't getting paid for the holiday? Yet, you know, maybe part-timers, this and that. But you have customers to care for. You hear me complaining a little bit. That's true. But it's still the thing. It was affected by the holiday. And all of these things would have been different. A real qu qu question that we ought to ask ourselves is, can we honor God when we are making up holidays that he never had anything to do with? And I say we really can't. Now, we may be kind of chained into some. You might be, feel like that because of family and this and that. You know, that's between you and the Lord. You know, but we really don't honor him, especially with these pagan celebrations, because there are so many lies uh, that go along with this. I just remind you of the story from 1 Samuel 15, where King Saul was sent to wipe out the Amalekites. He was sent, he was not to take any prisoners and he was not to take any spoil. He was not to take the cattle or anything like that. This was what God had ordered for him. But instead of this, he spared the king of the Amalekites and they kept the best of the cattle. What for? So that they could hold a sacrifice to the Lord. They thought God would be honored if they held a great sacrifice dedication for giving them a great victory and this and that. But God said, no, that's not what I want. And I think this is forever an example to tell us that no matter how well intended we are, we shouldn't be walking outside of the will of God. The plain fact is, in the New Testament, we have nothing that instructs us to observe any days. And to tell you the truth, that's a great liberty that God gives us, and we should be thankful for it. Take this to heart, pray about it, as you consider this information, and again, remind yourself of different things said in the description. May God bless.